Did you always want your voice to sound as sexy as mine? Well, you're in luck. Let's get right into it. First off, you're going to have to go to your internet browser and type in the address voicemeter.com. I'll also leave it in the description. You want to scroll down until you find Voice Meter Virtual Audio Mixer and then download the exe file. I already have this downloaded and installed, but all you have to do is click install and then save and then you have to run the exe file. And then once you go through the installation, all you have to do is restart your PC because that will install the drivers needed for Voice Meter. Now that you have Voice Meter installed, let's look at the software itself. First, you want to go to this A1 tab and then select your headphones but in MME. The difference between WDM and MME is just a driver type. One is newer and one is older, but the older one is more compatible and you won't experience any issues with it. That's why I choose MME. So once you have that selected, you have to go over to your hardware input one and then select your microphone. For this one, you can use WDM because I have not experienced any problems with it. If you do seem to experience problems with MME or WDM, then just choose MME version of that microphone. I'm using NVIDIA Broadcast, so I'm passing my HyperX Quadcast through NVIDIA Broadcast and then NVIDIA Broadcast through Voice Meter. So mine is a little bit more complicated, but It'll be the same exact concept if you just use your microphone itself. Once you have the microphone selected, you're good to work with voice meter. First, you want to look at the graph. You want to take this dot and slide it up, but do not go past the horizontal line. Once you go past the horizontal line, it'll create more of an echo. But if you do stay just below it, it'll put more clarity in your voice. And then to add that bassy effect, all you have to do is start going left. Once you go left you want to find that sweet spot for your microphone because all of them are different but once you find that sweet spot all you have to do is leave the dot there the next part is compression compression i usually set to 2.0 because if you go any higher you'll start experiencing more and more room tone noises after you talk it'll leave that kind of hissy noise right after you speak so do not go too high on the compression so turn the compression up to around two you can kind of play with that if you want um, and then for noise gate, I usually try and keep a noise gate on even though my microphone's good about canceling a lot of the noise around me. Um, I keep the gate around 2.0, but if you have a louder room, you can turn that up more. If you have a quieter room, you can turn that down a little, but I like to keep it at least on like one. Now for voice meter itself, you won't see any of the special effects here or any of these extra tabs with A1, B1, which is okay. It's still the exact same concept, but you want to deselect A1 because that's where you can hear yourself and monitor your voice. You want to use that for when you're tuning it, but once you're done, you want to deselect A1. Next, you want to make sure your fader gain is at the appropriate level. You don't want this bar going above this zone into the red because that's when your mic is going to start clipping. So make sure that stays in the uh, zone below red and never above it. And with that, you're basically good to work with voice meter however you want. Just make sure it's also set as your uh, input device in Windows. You can check that by going to start, settings, system, sound, and then go down to input and make sure it's selected as voice meter output. That should be the default output when you use hardware input one. If it doesn't seem to be working, which you can test to see if this bar starts going up on test your microphone. If it doesn't, just go through the different voice meter output devices until it starts moving. And if you really want this to be your default system device, you can go to the sound control panel, go to recording, scroll down until you see voice meter output and say set as default communication device. Once you set it as your default communication device, all applications that you run that use your microphone will see voice meter output as your default input device. I hope you found that tutorial helpful. If you have any questions, leave your questions down in the comments. Please make sure you like and subscribe and I hope to see you in the next video. Peace out.